Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you how to move multiple files from one folder to another using C Sharp or using SSIS and then wait for the files to be available in the source folder maybe up to 24 hours and wait every hour or maybe every 10 minutes or every 5 minutes so it's up to you so recently I got a question from one of my subscriber Gyan Dash and he asked that he is having a package and he is moving the files from one folder to another one but his requirement is that when we don't have the file on the path to archive then it should wait for the 24 hours and during the wait period it should check for the files location within every hour whether the files have been added or not and if files are added then it should move those files to the archive folder so I thought to make a video on this one because that might be helpful for others as well so let's jump to the demo so I have written some code in the C Sharp console app and the same code can be called from the script task from the SSIS package as well. So let me just briefly explain you the code and then I will show you executing the code. So maybe I can put a pause of maybe 10 seconds just to show you and then the process will run until 24 times and after each iteration it will wait for 10 seconds and if the files will be added to the source folder then it will move the files and will exit from the loop. So let's see what we are doing here. So this is our main function and in the main function so we have actually declared a local variable current date time here and we are getting the current year, month, date, hour, minutes and seconds into a local folder. This is actually used for, for the logging purpose. So I have implemented the try and catch block so in case the process will fail then a new file will be created inside the dfiles logs folder and the error details will be logged there. Okay. So that's why I have created a log folder here, log variable and this is the path. So in case you, in your system the path is different then you can create a different path or you can create a new folder. Okay. Now inside the try block I have actually used a j variable here which, which will be used inside the for loop and then I created a is moved file bool variable. So initially it will be a false. Okay. So that when I move the file so I can set it to true. Then I am using a for loop here the loop will start from the value as 1 and it will run until the value of the i will be less than 25 means the loop will run until 24 times if you want to run the loop maybe 100 time or 1000 time then you can just change the value of the j now this is the actual code the moving code so in this code this is our source folder from which we will be moving the file so we will be moving the files from d files production data and this is our destination path so we will be moving the files to the C files location if your source file is in different folder then you can just replace this path and if your destination path is some different path then you can put your destination path here now another option is files to move so we will be moving all the files if you just want to move some specific files like only the CSV file then you can put like star.csv here and it will move only those files in this line we are actually getting all the required files into the file list array and then we are running a for each loop here so we are just looping through all the files and then moving each file to the destination folder so as soon as it will move the file then we will set the is moved file local variable to true so that we know that the file has been moved okay after this particular code we are checking like if is moved file equal to true so if the is moved file is true means the file have been moved then what we will do we will check that in the log folder actually we will create a file progress.txt so we have a log folder that I declared earlier this one log folder so in the log folder we will maintain the waiting period okay so we will check that if the progress.txt file will be there then what it will do it will append some data to the progress.txt and it will append that this is the i iteration and files have been moved so what is happening actually because we are waiting for the 24 hours so what I want is that after each iteration it should insert a record into a txt file into the progress.txt that this is the first iteration this is second iteration this is third iteration so that we know that the package is running the process is running and we can easily check the logs so that we know the process is running otherwise we won't be sure like if the process is actually running or it got failed or it, what it is doing okay so just to keep some auditing thing we have added this logic so if the progress.txt file will be there in the log folder then it will append the text otherwise it will create the progress.txt file 
and will insert a record into the text file that this is the i iteration and files have been moved. Now as soon as it will move the file, it will set the value of the i to 25 so that the loop can't be continued. Okay. And suppose if the files have not been moved, so if the process did not come inside this because there are no files to move, then what will happen? It will go into the else loop and in the else loop, it will again check that if the progress.txt file exists or not. If the progress.txt file exists, then it will append some text that this is the ith iteration and it will append the current date time instance as well so that we know that at this particular time it was the first iteration and at this particular time this was second iteration third iteration and so on so if the file will exist then it will append the data if file won't exist then it will create a new progress.txt file inside the log folder and will append the text okay so if files won't exist then I have waited for 10 seconds here and if you want to wait for maybe 1 minute then you can put this value and if you want to wait for 1 hour 60 minutes then you can put this particular value so you can just uncheck this option. So this is the code that I am using and then I am using a catch block here so in the catch block what will happen that if any error will occur in the try block then if file error log underscore current date time dot log will be created and the error message will be written to that particular file that I will show you like how it will work. So I think what I can do here because our source folder is this one de files production data. So let me show you the so this is our location de files production data. So as of now we don't have any files okay and this is our C file this is our destination folder. So as of now we don't have any file in the destination as well. Now in the source file we don't have any folder and in the logs this is our logs folder so this is empty as well as of now okay so let me show you executing the package now so i can just click on start so it should wait for 10 seconds and the process will run 24 times so the process is running right now and we have put a pause of the 10 seconds okay so i can go to the log folder so in the log folder you can see a txt file here progress.txt and if i open this one so you can see that this is the first iteration this is second iteration so the process is running okay and if you come back again so you will see the progress of the process that the process is running now this is the third iteration okay so it will continue adding the data until the process is running and it is waiting so you can see that it has waited five times here okay and it is checking every 10 seconds so you can see that the process is waiting to be have the files in the production data d production data okay so what i can do i can actually move the files inside the production data so that it can move the files to the destination folder d folder okay so let me check again how many iteration are done so seven iteration are done okay so the process has waited for 70 seconds so let me just move the files to the production data so i move the file here okay now they should be moved so now you can see that the files got moved automatically and the process got completed okay and now if you go back to the c files location then you can see all the files have been moved here now if you go back to the source folder so the source folder is empty and if i go to the logs folder so in the logs folder there should be an entry that the so after the ninth iteration the files have been moved at this particular time so i think this is a good example how you can actually move the files you can wait for the files to come and then you can move the files when they are available. Now I have implemented the error handling as well so in case any error will occur then the process will fail as well okay. So suppose uh, the process got failed at some location okay maybe at this particular location it got failed so I can just intentionally fail it so I can put a value as int i equal to 10 and then I can put a value int b equal to 0 and then I can declare a value int c equal to a divided by b so a divided by b so it will throw a um, divide by 0 exception because we can't divide a value by 0 so we will divide 10 by 0 so it will throw an exception and error file will be created in the log folder so let me start the process so the process got completed seems like an error has happened so now you can see that an error has happened an error log file got created so if i open this particular log file so you can see that this one attempted to divide by 0 so you can see that this is a very nice example like how the process will run and it will handle the errors as well and will check for the files so i think that's it for today's video and i will share this code with you so you can check the 
link in the description of this particular video and you can download this code and you can use it in your environment as well so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time you create a new video thank you so much